Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I got a chance to interact with uh, uh, this Matthew Johnson from Johns Hopkins. He's doing this large scale study of psychedelics. It's, it's becoming more and more, I've gotten a chance to interact with that community of scientists working mm -hmm. on psychedelics. But because mm -hmm. of that, that opened the door to me to all these, uh, what are they called, psychonauts, the mm -hmm. people who, like you said, the 10% who uh -huh. are like, I don't care. I don't know if there's a science behind this. I'm taking this spaceship to, mm -hmm. if I'm be the first on Mars, I'll be, uh, the you know, you know, psychedelics are interesting in the sense that in another dimension, uh, like you said, it's a way to explore the the limits of the human mind. Like, what is this thing capable of doing? Because you kind of, like when you dream, you detach it. I don't know exactly the neuroscience of it, but you detach your like reality from what your mind, the images your mind is able to conjure up and your mind goes into weird places. And mm -hmm. like entities appear, somehow Freudian type of, uh, like trauma is probably connected in there somehow, but you start to have like these weird, vivid worlds that like. So, do you actively dream? Do you? No. Do you why not? I, I have like I, six I, six hours of dreams a night. It's like really useful time. I know. I do. I haven't. Uh, I I don't for some reason. I just knock out, and uh, I have sometimes like anxiety inducing kind of like very pragmatic like nightmare type of dreams, but mm -hmm. not nothing fun, nothing. Nothing fun? Nothing fun. I, I try, I, I unfortunately have, mostly have fun in uh, the waking world, which is very limited in the amount of fun you can have. <laughs> it's not that limited either. Yeah, that's why. Well, we'll have to but, talk. <laughs> yeah, I need instructions. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's I, like a manual for that. You might wanna. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up. I'll ask Elon. What, uh, what did you dream? You know, years ago, and I, I read about, you know, like, you know, a book about how to have, you know, b become aware in your dreams. I, I worked on it for a while. Like, there's this trick about, you know, imagine you can see your hands and look out. And and I got somewhat good at it. Like, but my mostly, when I'm thinking about things or working on problems, I I I prep myself before I go to sleep. It's like I, I pull into my mind all the things I want to work on or think about. And then that, let's say, greatly improves the chances that I'll, I'll work on that while I'm sleeping. And, and, then, and then I also, you know, basically ask to remember it. And I often remember very within detailed. Within the dream yeah. or outside the dream. Well, to bring it up in, in my dreaming and then to remember it when I wake up. It's, just, it's, it's more of a meditative practice to say, you know, to prepare yourself to do that. Like if you go to, you know, to sleep, still gnashing your teeth about some random thing that happened that you're not that really interested in, you'll dream about it. That's really interesting. Maybe. But, I, but you can direct your dreams prep. somewhat by prepping. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that. It's really interesting. Like the most important, the interesting, not like, uh, what what did this guy send in an email kind of like stupid worry stuff, but like fundamental problems you're actually concerned about yeah. and prepping. And interesting for. things you're worried about or, or books you're reading or, you know, some great conversation you had or yeah. some yeah. some adventure you want to have. Like there's there's a lot of space there. Yeah. And and it, it, it seems to work that, you know, my percentage of interesting dreams and memories went up 